Hi everyone, this is Melissa with Sagebrush Wellness and I am going to be sharing with you today several things. One, what can we learn from a food sensitivity taste test? And I'm gonna be sharing with you my own food sensitivity test that just came back. So we can get kind of a picture of what it, what it means, like the actual test results, but also what, do, what can we assume or ascertain overall as a result of what we see. The second thing we're gonna be talking through is what is the difference between a food allergy and a food sensitivity? And the third thing we're going to be talking through is how does this play into a chronic illness or a chronic disease or an autoimmune condition, anything that has chronic inflammation at the basis of the disease process. This is a really big deal, right? Awesome. Welcome, welcome. I'm excited to share this with you. So let me start out with a food allergy versus a food sensitivity. And we're gonna use a site from Everly Well. Um, they do a food sensitivity test. I do not like it. I don't particularly care for the way they do the uh, lab testing, but I do love how they have laid this out on their uh, websites. So we're gonna borrow it today. Um, I've had quite a few people use Everly Well for their food sensitivity testing. Um, just me as a practitioner, I don't really care for how it, yeah, how the lab side of things works. So anyway, so food sensitivity versus food allergy. This comes up often when we are talking about chronic inflammation with my clients. So I want you to really understand this. So a food allergy is an IgE mediated immune response. This is a, like a histamine response. So say somebody with a peanut allergy that accidentally is introduced to something with peanuts, whether it's, um, you know, a food or maybe it's some dust or they just get it on them, right? So anaphylaxis. So here's a really great list of what are the symptoms. I love the symptom list. This is a very complete one. Absolutely love it. And a food allergy can be potentially life-threatening, right? It's something that happens right now. So when we're talking about food allergies and food sensitivities, they are completely different animals. They are completely different response in the body. So if you test for food allergies, you are not going to find, because you're testing for IgE mediated immune response in the body, you're not gonna find food sensitivities, right? And in my work clinically, I have found that food sensitivities are one of the biggest drivers for continuing inflammation for people. Not the only one, that's for sure, but this is a big one. And believe it or not, it's one of the easiest ones to address, right? Because we get to choose what gets on our fork and goes into our mouth, right? We love food and there is not, I've, I've had this question so many times, what is a bad food? There aren't bad foods, right? Where we get into is it good or bad for me? We start looking at food sensitivities. What is your body reacting to? What is your, the response in your body when you have that food? Many of you may have been trained to do like a food elimination diet. That's great, but it's not going to tell you food sensitivities. You might detect some of them, but you're not going to detect especially like the one-offs like cinnamon or pineapple or things like that, that are just really small that you wouldn't expect. So food sensitivity is an IgG mediated immune response. So here's a really great list of food sensitivity symptoms. One thing that's not in here that I see so much is anxiety and depression, okay? All of these are really great, but anxiety and depression should be on here. All right, so the response to the food may happen up to 48 hours after that food is ingested. 
So the body builds up antibodies to this food, right? So when we're wanting to really dissipate immune, um, how can I say, dissipate what is really dysregulating the immune system, we need to look at food sensitivities because they can very possibly be triggering a continued inflammation in the body. Okay. All right. Let's pop over to mine, my food sensitivity report that I just got back. And I want to give you a quick background. All right. So I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis when I was 33. I have, I'm 45 now, and I have since completely recovered. I've been symptom free for most of those years. It took me about two and a half years to completely recover. And then since then, I've had the normal ups and downs of, you know, just we all do, right? But I have not fallen back into multiple sclerosis symptoms. Pardon me. So it was my assumption that, you know, I'm doing pretty darn good, right? I feel good. My body feels good but I was having just these little dogging, nagging problems that would kept popping up, just minor things. And I'm like, okay, here we go again, right? So I'm like, what is going on? So I did a food sensitivity test for myself and look what came up. Now, all of my food sensitivities do not show up on here. One of the big ones is gluten, but I haven't had gluten for probably nine years. Okay, so that's not gonna show up. Another food sensitivity that didn't show up is tomatoes and potatoes. So because I took them out, and we'll talk about this later, but because I've taken them out so well for so long, I can have them once in a while and they don't show up in even the two plus reactions phase. But these are new ones for me. I didn't know that I was allergic to dairy and I'm using allergic and sensitivity interchangeably here when I should be just saying sensitive. So I will change that. I didn't know I was sensitive to eggs. I love eggs, especially in the morning, but my body is very reactive to those. Cucumber, clams, I love cucumbers. I don't have them often. I think I've had clams once in my life. So when, you're ha when you see foods in here that you're like, okay, I never eat that. We need to look at cross reactivity. What is looking similar to that in the body? And down here, whey, barley, turmeric, or turmeric, however you want to say it, pecans and sugar cane. I knew my body didn't do well with sugar, but this is a new, these are new to me, right? And it was really helping to answer a question for me, why my body was not able to just be completely healthy. All these little things that kept coming up. And now I know that what's going on is I've still got inflammation happening in my body because I was having these foods, especially eggs, every day, sometimes more than once a day, right? So since I have cut them out, which was, I just got this um, test result back. I just got serious about cutting things out yesterday, but like my ring is loose. The inflammation is already, my, my jeans I'm wearing today are loose. It's already, my body is already starting to shed some of that inflammation, okay? Another huge thing that I learned from this food sensitivity result is that I still struggle with leaky gut, okay? When you see, anytime you you get this report back and you've got over five foods you, you're sensitive to, you can just about write it down that you still have intestinal permeability. So if you know much about autoimmune conditions, this tells me that I am still vulnerable to autoimmune or immune system dysregulation. All right. So that's filled in a lot of plate, a lot of uh, holes for me. So when we have an autoimmune condition, a lot of it is part of the mechanism of what is happening is there is intestinal permeability. And when I work with a client, that's one of the hugest things that we work on is decreasing inflammation, bring it down to zero if we can and really help heal that gut. Now I know that's what I need to do for me, right? So I've started work on that. So just kind of recapping, the difference between food sensitivity and food allergies 
here's my food sensitivity test. What did I learn from that, right? I learned that I'm still triggering inflammation in my body. Look at the foods that I was eating all the time, right? Especially I was doing quite a bit of dairy, not a lot, but not terribly a lot, but cheese now and then. But eggs, I was doing every day. This is causing an ongoing inflammatory response in my body. And because the amount of foods that my body is sensitive to gives me a huge clue around the fact that I still potentially have some intestinal permeability. Because of that, I know that I am sensitive or vulnerable to immune dysregulation. And when that is a problem, then I'm still, I'm still susceptible. So if I would not have caught this, give me a couple more years, who knows what? My body's been so strong, but who knows? I'm still susceptible. What if my MS uh, symptoms and everything that was happening with that, what if that would come back, right? I'm, I'm vulnerable to that right now. So I'm gonna shore up the ship for sure. <laughs> so I've got my work laid out for me. And what am I doing? I'm taking out these foods hardcore. Everything that's in the red, I will probably never eat again or do my best to never eat again. Everything that's in the orange category, the cucumbers and clam, after four months, I may bring in cucumbers once in a while, just for special things. These guys down here, these after four, four months or so, I could probably gently bring those back in. I wouldn't wanna have them every day, but I could probably gently bring those up back in. While I am eliminating these foods, I am really working hard on a gut healing protocol for me, okay? Really shore up that gut, um, leaky gut piece for myself. Another thing that is answered when we do a food sensitivity test is this, and especially if you do the KBMO test, which I recommend, is look at all the foods that were tested, right? I really want you to see this. Look at all the foods that were tested millet, oats, rice, rye. See, gluten is green for me, but I know it's not from past history. But it didn't show up, right? Look at all the foods that I'm okay with. And sometimes this second page is the best page ever for my clients. Some of them have restricted their diet so far down that they're not getting very good nutrition. And this second page can really help open up their choices. Whoops, sorry about that. So as we're talking through this, I want you to really think about what your body is dealing with. And if you wanna get a food sensitivity test, I can help you do that, just contact me. Uh, it's a KBMO test, you can actually order it yourself. The only thing you need from me is I have a practitioner number that you'll need to put into the order form so that when your test is sent through the lab, we can keep track of it, the results come to me and I can share them with you. Okay, so awesome. I just wanted to share that with you. It's a really lovely juicy tidbit, something that I learned about my own journey and how I can help myself be more healthy. And I hope that this information can really support you when you're making decisions about what do I need to do for me, right? How can I really help myself? If you have an autoimmune condition or a chronic gastrointestinal issue, this is an important piece. So I would invite you to go to our website, sagebrushwellness.com, and you will see up on the bar across the top, symptoms analysis. This is a free service that we are offering to anybody. So go ahead, fill out that symptoms analysis form. When you send that in, I actually create a free appointment with you. I am doing an hour consultation with everyone who participates. The goal behind this free service is to really support you in making great decisions around your wellness journey. What do you feel is right for you? What do you feel is the next step? And really being able to look at the big picture piece for yourself, see what kind of put it all together. What, what do we really need to zero in on? and work on for you. Awesome. I hope you enjoyed the recording. Let me know in the comments below. 
and we'll see you sometime. Take care.